Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I have an emergency. Emergency heat, that is. The fan motor on my outdoor unit of my train heat pump burn out, and now I'm running on emergency resistive heat. We're nice and warm, but it's also costing a bit more money to heat the house. So why don't you join me as I replace the fan motor in my train XL14i outdoor unit? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. This time we're working with line voltage and moving parts. Nasty things can happen if you aren't careful. You could shock yourself or slice off a body part. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. Keep your head in the game, and if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these things, then don't. Now let's get started. I heard the fan bearings squealing on my 15-year-old heat pump outdoor unit one night. It was really cold, so I figured I'd wait until morning. Well, by then the motor had seized up and overheated, cooking the starting windings. I freed up the bearings, but the motor wouldn't start reliably, so I turned off the outside unit and switched to emergency heat. In hindsight, I should have switched to emergency heat as soon as I heard the bearing squealing. So today, I'm replacing the original General Electric fan motor with a Packard replacement condenser fan motor. While the original motor can only be mounted shaft down, turning clockwise when looking at the shaft end, the replacement motor can be mounted in any orientation and is reversible. I'll start out by turning off the power to the outside unit. All HVAC outdoor units should have a fuse or other visible air break located by the outside unit. Always remove the fuse and keep it where you can see it. If you leave the unit for a moment, when you return, glance at the fuse to make sure that the unit is still disconnected from the mains. Now let's get into the unit. In this train model, the top is secured with four small screws. Remove them and the top lifts off. I notice that the original motor mounts with screws and dedicated holes in the end belt. The replacement motor doesn't have those holes. Will I have to cobble something together? No, the Fawkesa train also added additional holes in their mounting bracket to allow for other Frame 48 motors to be installed. I'll measure them to make sure the new motor will fit. I'll remove the fan blade while the original motor is still attached. Mine was attached by single square head cup point set screw. I'll put the fan blade in a safe place where it won't get damaged. Before I remove the motor, I'll disconnect it electrically. First, I remove the electrical cover plate. Unfortunately, mice had built a nest there. Earlier, when I tried to rebuild the original motor, I removed the nest and some dead mice. However, there were still nest remnants inside. Making sure to use safety goggles, I used compressed air to clean the area and inspected it for damage. One wire had the insulation chewed off. That's probably why there were dead mice. The original motor has three leads, two for the mains and one for the running capacitor. This outdoor unit has two capacitors in one can, one for the fan and one for the compressor. We'll leave the original capacitor in place for the compressor. Note where the wires were attached so we can replace them later. I carefully remove three of the screws and gently let the motor hang by one screw. Then I grab the motor to keep it from falling and remove the last screw. I lift out the motor and wires and take it to the shop to prepare the new motor. I remove the motor from the box and note that there are drain plugs in the end bells. Per the directions, I remove the bottom drain plug and leave the top one in place. The new motor is the same size as the old motor, 
However, the shaft is much longer and it mounts differently. First, I measure to make sure the new fan will be able to attach to the mounting bracket. I'll be able to use the alternate mounting hole, so now it's time to address the shaft length. I use the machinist square to mark where to cut off the new shaft and then verify I'll have enough shaft length remaining to mount the fan blade. Everything is okay, so let's get cutting. I did it old school since I didn't want to get abrasive dust from a cutting wheel all over the motor and possibly inside the bearings. After it's cut, I'll dress the shaft end on a grinder. Spoiler alert, I didn't trim the long screws on the shaft end of the motor. That will come back to haunt me later. Let's prepare it electrically. The new motor has four leads, two for the power and two for the running capacitor. It also has a plug where the rotation can be changed. The wires are the same gauge as the original, but have much thicker insulation. Although the wires can be exposed, I'll still use the conduit since it makes things neat. However, that means I'll have to cut off the factory attached spade connectors that are on the capacitor leads. Okay, let's mount the motor. I'll make sure the motor is rotated so the wires are close to the conduit and then slide the motor screws into the alternate mounting holes. I install all four nuts and then tighten them together. After the motor is mounted, I'll use a stiff wire to pull the wires through the conduit. Then I crimp on new spade connectors using heat shrink tubing to seal the ends. I attach the power leads, one side to the relay and one side to the other power light. I could have attached the power lead to the original capacitor, but I traced the power back and connected the fan directly to the source. I also attach the capacitor wires to the new 7.5 microfarad running capacitor and look for a place to mount it. I noticed some pre-drilled holes on the side of the electric compartment that looked promising, so I removed the side panels to make sure I wouldn't drive a screw into any Freon too big. The coast was clear, so I cut some hanger iron and mounted the new capacitor to the side. As an added precaution, I wrapped the exposed capacitor terminals with electrical tape. I now reinstall the fan blade. I slide it onto the shaft making sure the set screw is aligned with one of the flats on the motor shaft. Oh crap! It's hitting the long screws on the shaft end of the motor. It would have been so easy to remove when it was in the shop. Oh well, I'll grab a Dremel tool and cut them off in place. I re-reinstall the fan blade and now it spins freely. Time to bump the motor for rotation. I turn the power back on and turn on the outside unit. It has proper rotation, so I don't have to do anything. If it was spinning the wrong way, I would have reversed the rotation plug. I disconnect the power again and reassemble the side panels, the electrical compartment, and reinstall the unit top. Then I repower the unit and clean up. Success! Thanks for joining me today. We replaced the fan motor in my train heat pump XL14i outdoor unit. It wasn't that difficult a job and since the HVAC contractor's hair is spread so thinly, it freed up a technician to work on someone else's unit who might really have needed their help. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. 
I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!